Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. Now I want to talk to you today about how abortion is something that has been on people's mind and it's going to be a hot topic for a while but I feel like I should reiterate a very good point is that there is nothing noble about executing a baby and if it's not an action that is noble it doesn't need to be commended and it doesn't need to be championed and it's nothing to cheer for or holler for and so I want to encourage the women who are doing the right thing by keeping their children and only having intercourse with men who want to be with them not getting high and sleeping around the women who are doing better and accepting responsibility being mature these people are the type who should be commended and so one thing in particular we must ask ourselves is how are we going to how are we going to convince these rabid, wild, really vicious, cruel, non-merciful feminists on why they should care about innocent, helpless, fragile babies? And one way we can do that, I believe, inshallah, is that we will show them the beauty of motherhood. Motherhood gets mocked a lot now, and feminists see children as a roadblock to their fornication and career. But if we turn the tables and we explain how life on this planet is quite short and your window of fertility is pretty much in a spectrum, we should encourage families over dry paper diplomas and pets. Because if we don't do this, we end up losing the narrative and being cowards. And we are cowards if we can't defend the innocent. And if we can't convince women to keep their legs closed, use rubbers, pull out, use contraceptives, get married. Like we have so many things that are free to help women be more responsible. And if we don't remind people that there are ways to prevent pregnancy instead of going through abortion, then we're doing a disservice. And since so many feminists now get abortions on purpose, they film it, they upload it to TikTok, they call it Yetus the Fetus, they glorify it, we have to have a merciful tone towards the babies. The more you look at these women at these abortion rallies, how they scream into the microphone, I've been seeing so many feminists rage, scream, cry, turn into absolute monsters because they can't cull babies anymore. As easily, that is. And it's heartbreaking because we're creating some of the most coldest women ever because of secular liberal atheists who serve the occultist agenda. And so we have to show the warmth. And this is where Muslim women come in. And they talk about the good aspects of childhood and motherhood and family and a good lover, your husband, your spouse, right? And how we can turn the tables on them. We have enough women complaining about men. We don't have enough congratulating men and helping them to do better. And I feel like that is a window that we should see. And if we do that, we can help women feel proud that they did an abort and make them feel special that they did an abort no matter their economic status and I highly encourage men as well to investigate if a woman's had an abortion and if you can I would say don't be with that woman now some women will say they repented they changed but if you've had two abortions you know there's a sister out there who is better than you who hasn't killed a child and she deserves to have a good man because she did the right thing and she has more noble character than you and so if brothers started picking women who don't have an abortion in their history this will also I think discourage certain women from executing their babies 
because men have a lot of power to shape the way women behave. And men shouldn't change their behavior depending on what women desire because they're heavily brainwashed by the media. And we, sisters, should encourage women to see the importance of family, unlike Sophia Sabrine, who mocked fertility, has no children from my understanding. At the time of her debate with Daniel, didn't have a spouse. She chose a engineering degree over being a mother and is looks older than 35 so some sisters may want to go the cold route of academia before they have kids I would say that you can have kids during your college education but also before your college education as well and have that journey along with your children or wait till your children are grown up but to put it off you know that is a very sad exchange because the satisfaction of your diploma will fade as soon as you graduate and if you can't find a job and you're working for Uber Eats and DoorDash or Starbucks or Pete's Coffee you know or as a waitress which doesn't require a college degree or a bartender you name it well what was it all for then and you're drowning in student loan debt high interest as well and the debt will also make you think that you shouldn't have children. If you go in debt for a car, debt for college, debt for a home, now you'll think that you can't afford a kid. So what did you really get in the end? You didn't really get much, I'd argue. The memories you build with your children are going to be what lasts you in your darkest days. Even if they grow up to be little naughty ones, you still have those precious memories of their childhood that can sustain you in your darkest hours of emotional nihilism and cynicism and beware of these women who are raging at the camera these are very unstable mentally ill people and any woman who hungers to harm helpless babies in such a way as they are why would you ever turn your back or trust a woman like that be very cautious and so if you know someone who hasn't had an abortion maybe say I'm glad you didn't have one it may be kind of weird but we need to normalize it you know imagine <laughs> if you know these feminists are having shirts that say I'm proud of my abortion shout your abortion why don't we make shirts as well that say I didn't have an abortion and proud we have to flip the narrative on them show them that mercy is the superior form that doing the right thing and not executing the little one and eliminating that heartbeat is the higher, noble, more valuable road to go on. And also just speaking the plain truth that 2022 in America, if you're getting pregnant, it's because you're lazy and you should be shamed because you're not a hero, you're not brave, you were sloppy, you slept with some dude who didn't care about you, you're probably high, or you're probably at a party getting passed around by the seventh guy, and you're picking dudes that don't want to stick around. That's your bad character. That's your poor decision making. And if you have a good guy, you have money, and you execute the baby, I'd say that's even worse because you had money, but you chose money over the life of another human being. Your own child. You chose money over your own child. You can't get more cold than that. You can't get more cold than that. So we have to flip the rhetoric. We have to flip the narrative. And be proud of women who says, who say, I never had an abortion. Maybe I'm going to do that more often now. I never had one. And proud. Because these ladies are rioting. They're attacking churches. How long before they attack masjids? Right? They were dealing with people who are almost possessed, heartless, cruel, malicious, vindictive, and they're going to want to get revenge on women who are better than them. Women who chose to not sleep around. Women who chose to get a husband and keep him and, and work hard in their marriage. Women who chose to accept responsibility for their own actions and put on the duty of motherhood. Those women are better than those who chose to have five, six abortions, which is quite common. It's very common now for at least three. 
at least in America. And so we have to encourage young girls with the opposite information that the feminists are giving them. And if you know someone like a teacher who's lecturing how she had an abortion and she's proud, I would say treat her like you would treat a parasite who is leeching on, on your dog. Pluck them out from your life. Be cold hearted to them. Turn your back on them. Don't make them feel so special. Don't applaud them. You know, be hard towards them. If they're boasting about their assassinations of innocent beings, don't be afraid of them. Don't look up to them. See them as something like dog crap on the back of your shoe. They are disgusting human beings. And to women who have sincerely repented, comfort them and let them know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. Only for sincere repentance though. And so I'd also argue if you have a friend who's had multiple abortions, I'd say cut them from your life. You need to be careful who you get around. You need to be careful about whose energy is influencing you. And the more good people you have around you, the better it will be for you in the long run. And so let us commend now all the women who chose to do the right thing. The harder road, the better road, the more noble road. Because they're the ones who deserve applause. They're the ones who deserve attention. The women who chose the easy way out of abortion, nah, you deserve nothing. An eye for an eye is what ha should happen to you. But for the women who are stronger, more loving, more, more just everything better, every synonym for the word good should be applied to those women. They deserve our applause, our attention. Maybe we should start doing interviews where we Talk to women, why, why did you choose not to get an abortion? We should do things like that and talk about it. Write articles, write books, do videos, make posts, whatever it is. We should commend those women because what they did was remarkable in an era that glorifies and fetishizes the execution of babies. Where if you put down a dog who's bad, they'll feel bad for the dog more than they will a human. And we have to make sure that we are not being friends with people who think a dog's life is more important than a human's life. Again, let us be wise and let us protect and honor the women who chose the better road, which was keeping their pregnancy instead of running away from responsibility and their own poor decision making. Hope you're having a good day. Let me know what you think.